Welcome back to In Conversation. This is a series I do where I chat with all different writers and authors at all different stages of the publishing journey about a variety of topics. And today I'm talking with Ashley Shuttleworth um, about sequels and writing sequels and all about their experience writing sequels, my experience writing sequels, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Ashley. Um, I wrote A Dark and Hollow Star, which comes out next year. Um, and yeah, I'm currently working on the sequel for it, which has a title, but I'm not allowed to say yet. Secret title. Secret title. And Ashley and I have the same editor. <laughs> yes, yes, which has been great because we can talk about the process together. Exactly. And know that we're going to have a similar <laughs> sort of yeah because I, I think I, yeah all of the I think at every publishing house they're all different yeah so at least we know what we're on the same page with what we're doing <laughs> exactly which is nice I know like a weirdly large amount of Sarah's clients I know right <laughs> I'm like did it did I just like stalk everybody there but it's just no she's she's got a good little group and <laughs> yeah, they just circle around together yeah. I don't know yeah. how we all have just ended up in contact with each other well and you know what I think the YA Twitter is kind of a small space as much as it seems like there's a lot of people there it's a small corner of Twitter so I think we all kind of know each other somehow yeah and end up connected in some way yeah. at some point in time but still it's cool is this the first sequel you've ever drafted? Yes. And like, even of anything, no matter what, even like fan fiction, I've never yeah. written a sequel to anything I've written. And so it's just been like, all right, here's the first one, it's done. But for some reason, I can't seem to plan like an actual story that doesn't include a sequel, mm. even though I've never written one. It's just too big, too much story. Yeah. I feel like you know that when you write a story or like either this is like self-contained or this is yeah. always going to be too big. For me to write a standalone, yeah. I have to very specifically plan from the beginning for it to be a standalone or yes. else expand. And yes. it but see, I'll go in to a story thinking, all right, we'll just make this a standalone. It'll be a nice, simple story. And then it's like 600 pages later and I've just discovered the plot. <laughs> oh no, this story is actually just like 20 books. Yeah. So. And now you have to have sequels. <laughs> and now, and now I have to have a sequel, so we have to get good at this. Oh my gosh, yeah. This is also the first sequel I've ever written. That's why I asked because I wonder, because I know some people write fan fiction and then maybe they're doing all sorts of fan, fish, fan fiction sequels, but I was always lazy and I couldn't follow through with writing any fan fiction, so. Did you have any fears going into writing a sequel for the first time? Yes, mostly because, well, I've never done a sequel before, so it is entirely new ground to me, but I think also, I mean, like everyone talks about second book syndrome. And mm -hmm. before starting to write the sequel, I was like, I don't really know what that means. I'm really pumped to write the second book. I'm looking forward to carrying on with the story. I found out what it means. <laughs> and it means that, at least for me, um, comparing this book constantly to what I've done before and worrying about you know, is my editor going to like this? Is my agent going to like this? Are they just going to regret everything that they've ever, like, why did we sink this money into her and time? And maybe we should just cut her loose. This book is terrible. And then, you know, there's the fact that, I mean, I've been working on A Dark and Hollow Star for like three years now. Mm -hmm. I haven't written, even though it's not entirely brand new, it's still writing something from scratch. And I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> there was, I'm like, oh my god, do I remember how to write a story? What if I only know how to revise now? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> once you, revise, you always revise for so much longer than it took you to write the story. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, yeah. Once I get the ball rolling, it usually d does not take me very long to write. It takes a while to get the ball rolling. Yeah. But yeah, most of the time it's revising and editing and <laughs> all of that new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Second that's kind of how I mostly. feel about it. Because it's so, it's also like when it's your first book you've sold, this is now you writing your first contracted book where they haven't seen the whole book from the beginning. Yeah. So it's like you've 
first of all, now you're writing something from scratch on deadline. You're not just like revising stuff, <laughs> but then you're also writing yes. something that no one saw to purchase. They just <laughs> hope that you will do a good job. You did. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, yeah. lads. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of panic inducing in that way. Like for me, my fears going into it weren't like, can I get this done in a timeline? Like I haven't worried about deadline times. It's mostly mm-hmm. been like, yeah, the, like second book syndrome is strange because it encompasses so many different things. Yeah, I it's think different it for everyone. I think that bit, like the is anyone going to like this thing that they haven't seen that I now have to write from scratch? <laughs> and then like my thing is, is this going to be <laughs> equivalent quality to the first yes. thing I put out that I worked so on for three years? Now. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah all kinds of things the deadline thing is definitely something that I again I didn't I was like that's oh, fine my my um sequel so far is like due in October and I'm mm-hmm. like that's oh, fine I have tons of time I get a little more stressed every day <laughs> seems like a little less time yeah the more time passes the less time yeah <laughs> go figure eh? there we go eh? yeah Exactly. Oh, man. And I have not gotten a deadline for my sequel yet. I am low-key not sure oh. if I was supposed to start writing it, but I did. So there it is. Yeah. Luckily, I had been starting on it just because I was pumped and this was before I did, you know, did a million more revisions. So I saw yeah. energy. <laughs> so I did actually start doing it. And then Sarah was like, so how's it going? And I'm like, uh, uh, well, good, but I didn't know it was supposed to be going. <laughs> was I supposed to be? Yeah. <laughs> Already? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> For you, what has been the best and the worst or less best thing about writing a sequel? The less best thing. <laughs> uh, definitely. I put a positive spin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Optimism. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely the best thing about sequel writing so far has been being able to carry on with the story. Because... Mm-hmm. It is um, a dark and hollow star is such a big world. <laughs> Oddly enough, for something based in our world in modern time, it is a lot of world building. Yeah. So it's nice to kind of take the things I've been setting up and carry on with it. And, you know, since a lot of the characters are already established, I get to start playing around with them more and, Definitely the relationships a bit more. I didn't get to do too much with it, even though maybe I did, but too much with it in the first book. So now I can just start messing around with everything. The um, probably the hardest part has been, sorry, trying to summarize what happened in the first book. Like sequels Uh have a weird thing where you have to recap what happened on the previous episode yeah and I find that very difficult for some reason yeah. <laughs> because it's mostly just time consuming going back what did happen in the first book I don't know what's happened in my story the amount of times that I've had to change things around and I don't know what the story is about people's like explain your story I don't know I don't know it's about magic and fairies I'm sorry <laughs> um some they're kind of awkward like <laughs> As you'll remember, yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> last time. Yeah, so then it's making it natural, working yeah. this naturally into the story. And like, I just need to carry on with things. Yeah. So I think that's been the hardest part is just doing the recap. Plus, again, because this is also new, like there are spaces that I've already described in great detail in the first book, um, like the palace. Mm-hmm. but we're back in the palace in the second book. So how much do I describe the palace again? Like, do I just say, all right, finger guns, we're here in the palace. Or <laughs> do I just like, all right, here's all the description all over again of where you are. Yeah. So it's been a learning curve. Yeah. I and I think hard. that's, that's a difficult thing. <laughs> it's yeah. about. The beginning will be the hardest, I think. And because that's when all of the similar stuff's happening. And then once I get past the beginning, I'll be fine. But yeah, because once you're past the beginning, it's like, okay, you remember everything now? Cool. Let's move on <laughs> to new stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and I'm very much looking forward to the new stuff. 
Yes. Yeah. Which is exciting. I think that's also like, I would say the best part is kind of getting to explore things that you didn't get to explore before. Um, like for me, there's some like tiny things that I set up in the first book yeah. where, like, where I was like, here's this character, just kind of slightly whatever. <laughs> and then in the next book, I'm like, there's so much more important now and you didn't know, yes. but you know. And that's really exciting. And like getting deeper into characters too, because a lot of my more minor characters are quite a bit more, they have bigger roles in this book just because mm-hmm. of the way the events of the first book went. So that's kind of exciting. And my main character is like doing a whole new thing now. So that's really fun. But yeah, the for me, the I would say the downside, the less best part is <laughs> yeah, that like, I'll just the less good yeah. side <laughs> is that constant like comparison of is this the same quality as this? And is this as good as this? Yeah. For me, because I've only so far written 10,000 words in uh, my sequel. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> I've been <same. laughs> obsessing over the beginning. And I'm like, is this beginning <laughs> yeah. as punchy as this <laughs> other beginning is? And this beginning is relevant because of how things in the sequel are going. But is it as exciting as the one I wrote before? And that, like back and forth and like wondering if the whole plot I've planned out <coughs> is as like punchy as the first draft but of course yeah. remembering that when I first wrote the first draft of my first book it wasn't that punchy either <laughs> yeah you definitely have to remember that this book one was a highly polished years of work this yeah. is like two months of 10,000 words <laughs> to keep rewriting over and over so but that is a good point that I, I um, in the in a dark and hollow star. There's my prologue, which I loved. Mm-hmm. It's been kind of like a very key part of the story, and you know I'm planning to have a prologue in each book because mm-hmm. it's kind of um, backstory to one of my characters, and the pressure of making it as good as the first prologue was because I feel like personally I feel like it was probably one of my best chapters and then I have this in the second book I'm like oh no now I have to do it again (laughs) the first one I wrote in like a fit of rage (laughs) because I was just really tired of rewriting the story over and over again so now yeah it's been there's that pressure too that's a good point yeah all kinds of things there are all kinds of stresses with writing it's great so many things (laughs) and then you have a constant side-by-side comparison because you're looking at your book that you've edited like a million times that for whatever reason in your brain you feel is legitimate to compare to this thing that you wrote like barely you know a couple months ago (laughs) yeah yeah and so now you don't even get to be envious of like other authors you get to be envious of yourself i did this once how can i do this again yeah exactly Uh, i get to hate myself for reading my own things (laughs) oh well and be like why can't you do it the same the first time (laughs) i already did it once oh well (laughs) you know what it's interesting because part of me is like why did you decide this needed multiple books why could you not right make one book and maybe in yeah, the and future, we should only do one book <laughs> it's not gonna happen you know no. it's not because there's a reason why it's more than one book yeah and i don't i don't know for you but i do know for me that i have plans for you know more than just sequel like series yeah and it's like why did you do this yeah. but then i'm thinking of the next series after this mm-hmm. And again, there's a keyword. I, it's also a series. No yeah. part of me wants to write anything that's standalone. <laughs> but, but it's good. Once, yeah. once we learn this skill, we'll just be like, Cassandra Clare, she's got how many books now? 18. Yeah. We'll be good. I don't know if she has 18, but uh, we'll be good. We'll just I be would, bang it out. If you said 30, I would have believed you. <laughs> <laughs> it could be 30. I don't know. I don't truly know. I don't really know either. I do know it's a lot. (laughs) I do know it's a lot. Yeah. 
and that's how it goes too. Like even for me, I was like, okay, these two books, and I was like completely contained, no interest in anything else. And then like a couple days ago, I was like, oh, I maybe have a <laughs> off idea. I maybe have two spin-off ideas. Okay, let's yep. this has become too much. <laughs> but yeah. I think that's how it happens though. That's how all these authors start having series that are like 10 books long. Cause I'm like, yeah. how can you think of this many things? But then that you just get really familiar with your world. Yeah. You can and that's kind of like it. brings back to like the joy and the best part of doing the sequels. Yeah. Continuously expanding on all those characters. It's all and interconnected. And liked and doing it. From sequels that you have read, what sort of things have you wanted to replicate or avoid when it comes to your own sequel? Um, well, I just, I think about the ones that I really like, and I think it goes hand in hand for me. Mm -hmm. Things that people don't do well are things that are like so amazing in books where it does work out yeah so i'm thinking more stakes when you're setting it you have all these threads and you have all these stakes set up and you're just kind of like building your plot and everything mm -hmm. and then in book two when you have to carry on with those they can either fall completely flat mm -hmm. and get lost you can forget about them you can just start inventing too much, <laughs> which I think will probably be my thing. <laughs> but, and then therefore it all just kind of seems ridiculous mm -hmm. and not believable, or it's just super exciting. All these things that you've set up in book one that you can carry over to book two and just make bigger and carry over to maybe like book three, however long it goes. But if you can kind of build on your momentum, I think that's what makes sequels really stand out as opposed to when you just everything kind of flies off the chart and yeah you've got too much going on you can't follow through with things nicely like um before writing my book i never really liked multiple point of views mm -hmm. because i always felt that too many point of views and i just there's too much going on with all the different characters but I've come to like it and I do think, you know, there's a way to do it correctly. And there's, yeah. again, if you, as long as you make sure everything's not spiraling out of control, you have like 10 different stories in one story. Yeah. Like the point of views all have to be aligned with one story for mm -hmm. it to carry on nicely. But I think that, I don't know, cause I don't really, I don't know. I'm not too judgmental of the stories that I read. Mm -hmm as far as sequels go because if i read a sequel i really liked the first one yeah. when you've <laughs> gone especially now point. before i used to read anything what when you've gotten to that point of reading the sequel like yeah. something has already been done right yeah yeah so usually usually if there's a sequel it, it's done right usually if there's three books then book two has at least succeeded in some way but yeah just thinking of the books that i you know, applaud for how they did with book two versus the ones that maybe not even book two, just the more it goes, the more I can tell you're just kind of scrambling for story. <laughs> so well, yeah. I think it's filler stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's like, I would say like building on what you said about like how the sequels coming together. Like to me, that's what makes super strong sequels strong when like, yeah there's stuff that shows up in the second book or third book. And you're like, I remember when this person yeah. appeared briefly and they said this and now it's all come back together. Yes. It's like, it feels like it belongs versus like that long sort of filler. You're just like, inventing it as you go. Yeah. Cause a lot of the stuff is inventing as you go, yeah. but it's, it's always nice when you can see something that showed up in the end, you at least had in your mind a few books earlier or whatever or the first yeah. book versus the second book yeah yeah which has been the beauty for me of when my friend said why don't you do your synopsis and plot your second book while you're on submission with your first and I was like I guess I can do that and now it has been so helpful because <laughs> I can yeah. switch stuff 
and like add in stuff to the first book that I know is going to come in in the second book. And I'm like, yes, I could have never done this. <laughs> if I was already <laughs> that's, done a, this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because yeah, because I'm not like some people just hold all of that in their head. And so for them, it's like, whatever. <laughs> but I, I'm not, that's not me. <laughs> as, as someone who like I've only just recently started plotting things out. Mm -hmm. As someone who keeps all this stuff in your head down, this is not just whatever. <laughs> but I think, you know what, I need to add something to my um, fears. And that is that the question about what we feared most going into this. Mm -hmm. I do recall now that, yeah, also um, not remembering things or like yeah. coming up with things later, like book two, realizing that I needed something in book one. Yeah but didn't put it there. So trying to figure out the plot around that now, because yeah. I, I have obviously a plan in my head for the way the story's going. I was made to have a plan. <laughs> um, but there are little things, little plot things, you know, with any story that kind of just creep up as you go. And I'm like, oh no. I'm probably going to run into, like, book one is going to be published, and I'm going to run into some major plot hole in book two that I probably should have figured out in book one, but for some reason just didn't see. I guess that's why we have, like, editors and stuff. And editors. that's probably why they make us write the outline. That's it for this episode of In Conversation. Uh, thank you so much to Ashley for joining me. Um, all their book informa information okay. along with the summary is below in the description so you can check out all of that. Be sure to add a Dark and Hollow Star to your Goodreads and no pre-order yet. No pre-order no, yet? No pre-order no pre yet. Add it to Goodreads. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One day soon. <laughs> yeah, eventually. There will be eventually. <laughs> but until now, Goodreads. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe to watch more videos. Um, if you want to see any of the other videos in this In Conversation series, I will link that I'm going to say over here. And you can watch the whole playlist. And that's it for this whole episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Bye.